This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar taking a look at audio inside Final Cut Pro 10. In this excerpt, I want to show you how to work with keyframes in audio. A keyframe is a point of change during playback. If nothing changes during playback, you never add keyframes. But if you want something to change, and audio levels are a classic example, you add a keyframe. To do that, hold the Option key down and Option click directly on the black volume line. And notice that it's now created this keyframe. I'm going to hold the Option key down, create a second keyframe, and grab that keyframe and drag down. And now the beginning of my music is loud. And it fades softer as it goes from the starting keyframe to the ending. Now I can have a, a third keyframe, option click and drag up, and a fourth keyframe and option click and drag down, and we can create all kinds of interesting volume effects. And if we need to, select the clip, go up to the inspector, and you see where it says volume. Notice there's our keyframe generator. This allows us to click on the left-hand chevron to move to an earlier keyframe or the right-hand chevron to move to a later keyframe. And if you need to reset, click this downward pointing arrow and say reset parameter. That's the fastest way to clear all keyframes associated with that setting. In this case, it's the fastest way to get rid of all the keyframes associated with your clip. So we set volume by grabbing this line, dragging up and down, or command dragging to gear down. And we can set keyframes by option clicking. Let's see what else we can do with in terms of audio. Let's click on this. And again, let's go back to our drum beat. Because Final Cut is set up to output stereo, we see that this drum beat is outputting equal amounts on the left and the right channel. But sometimes you want to change that. If you have a mono clip, a mono clip allows you to pan it. We call it the sonic field. It's the, the area between the left and the right speakers. And you can have a sound that starts on, say, the left-hand speaker and slowly moves to the right-hand speaker, or from the right-hand speaker moves to the left-hand speaker, because it allows uh, us to manipulate the position of the sound called panning. The way it works is select the clip, go up to the audio menu, and most of the time your clip is going to have a pan mode setting of none. That means that if it's a mono clip, it's pan center. If it's a stereo clip, the odd number channel comes out the left speaker. The even number channel comes out the right speaker. If we change the pan mode to stereo, and Apple has changed this menu. They've now divided into stereo settings up here and surround settings down here. We'll reserve surround for another webinar. Click on stereo left, right. As I drag the pan to the left, watch what happens on the audio meters. When I drag this all the way to the left, all the sound of this mono clip comes out the left-hand speaker. When I drag it to the right, all the sound comes out the right-hand speaker. In terms of mixing, you never, ever, ever take any of your on-camera talent or actors and pan them all the way left or all the way right, because you have no control over the playback environment that your viewers are watching the show. Maybe the left speaker doesn't work. Maybe the right headset's broken. You don't want to have half your dialogue disappear because you've panned that speaker all the way left or right. Instead, what you want to do is you want to keep main actors, main dialogue, panned very close to center, maybe leaning a little bit left or leaning a little bit right, but don't get carried away. Sound effects, on the other hand, music, you can get as carried away as you want. So for sound effects, I'll have a car that starts all the way left, and as it rushes through, I'll have it pan all the way right. How do I set a keyframe? You put the playhead where you want that pan to start. We'll do a real quick one. And you click this button right here. When it's gray, there's no keyframe. When you click it, there is a keyframe. Then drag the playhead where you want the pan to end and drag the pan the other way. As long as a parameter has a single keyframe assigned to it, as soon as you change that parameter, it will Final Cut will automatically create a new keyframe. So as we play this, watch the pan and watch the audio meters. It starts all the way left. And it ends all the way right. If you're interested in seeing what your keyframes look like, let us um, 
select the clip and type Control A. Control A opens up audio animation inside the timeline, and we can see under pan amount, there's our two keyframes. I can then grab this keyframe and drag it horizontally so I could change the timing of it in the timeline so you can compare how the pan matches up with a picture. Or I could click here and drag this to change it. To then hide this animation, type Control A to toggle it on or toggle it off. Most of the time I don't use this panel for either video, which is Control V, or audio, which is Control A. I generally don't use it in the timeline. I prefer to work in the inspector, but for finding the position of a keyframe and adjusting it to be exactly where you want it to be, dragging a keyframe in the timeline is the easiest option of all. Control A, and we'll hide what that. Reference again. waveforms illustrate is the volume of your sound if the sound was as loud as it could possibly be. If you've got a very soft clip, as I have here, sometimes it's hard to decide exactly where the sound is or isn't. It's really hard to decide where to place an edit. Reference waveforms allow you, as you zoom in on a clip, to find exactly that spot where you want to put an edit point. Well, reference waveforms are display only. It never affects playback, never affects your edit, never affects output. And you can toggle them on and off by going up to Final Cut Pro, Preferences. Click on the editing section and see this choice right here called audio, show reference waveforms. When this is not checked, the reference waveforms disappear. When this is checked, reference waveforms appear. This is display only. If it drives you nuts, turn it off. I tend to like it on because it doesn't hurt anything and sometimes it helps me to see what's going on, but everybody has their own opinion and if you like it, keep it. If you don't, turn it off. It makes zero difference to the quality of your sound, to the quality of your edit, or your output. It's display only and it displays in both the browser and in the timeline. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.biz store and look for Webinar 147. By the way, if you need to stretch your training dollars, a subscription membership to our video training library saves you money. You can access all of our videos for one low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,200 movies, dozens of hours of training, all in-depth and all up-to-date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.biz slash subscriptions. And thanks.